And we we are live. Good morning. Another good afternoon, depending on where you are. <laughs> right. I, I am so happy to be with author Cindy Williams Straubin, who has just released her wonderful new book. Uh, this could be you. Um, the book is a, a week and a half old. And um, I hope this is one of your first interviews. And I am so excited yes. to have you on the NBN New Books Network, the Children's Literature Channel, which I am lucky to host. And my name is Mel Rosenberg. So Cindy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, and uh, I'm, you know, it's so exciting to have a book published uh, by a, um, a traditional publisher and um, tell us all about it. Start at the beginning. Don't hold anything back. Okay. All right. All right. I've been uh, working toward this for about seven years, and um, I credit the Kidlet community with um, keeping me going and helping me to uh, improve and get where where I needed to be. And it it's thrilling, just absolutely oh. thrilling, to finally get there. Okay, so do you want to show everybody who can watch um, on the video cast uh, the new beautiful book? I would love to. This is, this could be you. <clears throat> and you and know what? Th this is you, Cindy. This could is. be you, and it is. It is. And, you know, working on the marketing in the last year or so, it's really become apparent how important this book is, not just for kids, but for everyone and, and how it parallels the, my writing journey for sure, because it's all about a growth mindset and doing what you need to do to achieve and not give up. Wonderful. And the, um, and the publisher is Cardinal Rule. Cardinal Rule Press, correct. And uh, the illustrator is? Julia Seal, and she lives in England. Um, I've chatted with her a few times, but um, haven't met her, which would be a wonderful thing to happen. But I am just thrilled with her work. She has just captured my vision so perfectly and added to it, added some wonderful, wonderful touches that I'll, that I'll share with you. Okay, so, so now's a good time to show uh, people who are watching a couple right. of, the, not too many double spreads, but a couple. Right. Well, I want to show you a couple of quick things even before that. And this was something that my publisher surprised me with. But behind the book jacket is a huge poster. So wow. everyone gets a, a big poster with the book. So that's, that's really exciting. And then uh, something that Julia Seal had a vision that just to me is perfect. The end papers are drawings by real kids. And we had a little contest on social media. And then it's some of our family members uh, from the publisher and the illustrator and myself. And so it really is a true representation of kids and what kinds of things they dream about. So, but I will show you, oh, it's so hard to know um, which ones to share because she did such a beautiful job, but um, I'll show you the, the first spread with you because this is something that um, just epitomizes the whole book, I think. Um, this is Julia Seal's family represented in this book and her daughter at the end of a long trek from this lake all the way up to the mountain. And it reads, who pursues their top dreams? They're never ever stop dreams. Persist until they drop dreams? Believe, it could be you. And every page ends in it could be you. And so at the event I had last week, um, we had hundreds of kids yelling it could be you. So it was really exciting, really fun. They helped me with the refrain on every page. So, Okay, can you read the ending of the book, which is uh, so beautiful? I can. It gives it, it gives away some real, uh, a real uh, big secret. And Listen, I, 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 um, it's, it's a great way to get people to run out and buy the book. Absolutely. Especially, especially those who haven't seen the wonderful pictures. Right. So here we have who defines a kind view, a teacher's stretch your mind view, a no one left behind view, instruct 
it could be you. And over here, who believes in your dreams? Courageous to the core dreams. The better than before dreams. Guess what? That who is you. And as you can see, there's a mirror. So every child can see themselves in the book, which was one of my huge goals. Not so literally, but I wanted to make sure that every child was represented or at least could see themselves in the pages. So, um, you know, I, I usually the genre of, of teaching kids things mm -hmm. um, yes. is not one of my favorites, but right. this book, it, um, it's so special. It cuts to the core. It, and um, I think you've done a wonderful job here. Um, and the rhymes are superb. I mean, like everything I, I, I teach my students, you know, don't rhyme, uh, don't, yep. te don't <laughs> teach. And this is yep. a te teaching book and it's a preaching <laughs> book and it rhymes, but it does so in such a wonderful manner. Thank you. I really appreciate that because yes, those are the things that, you know, that they tell us not to do. And for the first probably five years or so, I listened to that and, and I have lots of stories that don't do this, but in the last couple of years, um, or even before that, I felt like, you know, there are some things that kids need and maybe I can make it fun and have some, some, uh, teachable moments in there too. So, but you're right. You're right. It's all those things that it doesn't have an art, it doesn't have a storyline, doesn't have. So yeah, yeah. It does all the wrong things. <laughs> it, it does all the wrong things in such a right way. Thank you very much. I really it, appreciate that. It, it, it's, it's what I call making the right mistakes. So you've made the right mistake here. I love uh, that. Yeah. Let, let's, let's uh, go back to your uh, childhood and your eventual desire to become a published author. Um, okay. start at the beginning. We have time. All right. I grew up in a tiny little town, um, in Michigan where I still live in Michigan, not in that same town, but, uh, grandma and grandpa lived next door on the one end of the farm and aunt and uncle lived there. And I was surrounded by family all the time. It was fairly idyllic, really, uh, when you think about it and, I was that kid in school whose report card said talks too much and uh, and, and <laughs> doesn't listen enough. And I think that now my writing is a way for me to 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 still get that that talking out and maybe even those those kid that kid talk that I uh, you know was was t always told needed to gear it down so, a little bit. <laughs> so so why did that five year old Cindy have to talk? You know what? That's a really good. That's a really good question. I there were people that always listened to me. I always had someone there, so it wasn't like I was, you know, striving for attention that I wasn't getting. So that's a good question. I don't know. I was older than my siblings, and so I tended to be hang out with the adults more, or think I was, you know, I belonged more <laughs> with the adults. So <laughs> I think I was. I think I was a little bit precocious, but it was. Uh, that's, that was just me. Did you really grow up on a farm? The, it was no longer a working farm. It had been at one point in time. Um, the barn was still there. We, our favorite places to play were in the old silo and, you know, up in the rafters of the barn. Um, but it, like I said, it no longer was a working farm. We did have a couple of horses, but that's yeah. about it. Um, but I, lots I, I, of land I hope one second, Cindy, uh, for our listeners, I hope the silo was empty when you played in it. It was, it was. <laughs> it's a it very wasn't. dangerous, it's a very dangerous <laughs> yes. place to Absolutely. be when it's full. Absolutely. No, it was totally empty. We had our, our little house in there. So. <laughs> that's wonderful. And, and, um, and as a child, what were your interests? You know, I was kind of a rough and tumble kid, and I really wasn't much of a reader, honestly. Um, we had, you know, little golden books from the grocery store, but that's, you know, about it. And I didn't spend a lot of time with them. And I look back now and think, oh, I missed so very much. And maybe that's why I'm, you know, I grasp onto them now. Who knows? But um, I, yeah, I was kind of out and 
playing softball and hanging out with outside. So I, while you're talking, I'm thinking of these picture books as a kind of a life raft. Yes, that's good. That's good. I like that. So you, I think an, I think another part of that for me is that I realize now that kids think so differently and part of what I'm striving for now is to help adults like this book I believe is as much for the adults as it is for the kids helping the adults helping the adults know how to tweak their language to help kids strive more and achieve instead of saying uh, I can't, they might say, I can't do it yet, but I'm still working. And when kids grow up with that language right from the beginning, they're, you know, it, it becomes ingrained in them. And so I made a big point of the back matter being very intentional and to help adults know how to do that. But you're right. I think I'm, I'm trying to help the kids understand more than I did about and, and think a little bit differently than we don't, I think sometimes we forget that kids don't understand what we're saying all the time or understand the way that we think they do. Okay, so do you feel that you didn't, that you were misunderstood as a five-year-old? No, I don't really, although I look back now at my kids and my daughter, one of my daughters, my youngest, didn't tell me until she was adult that when we used to say, just do your best, to her, that meant the best. And she didn't understand the distinction between your best and the best. And so, you know, we assume we have these well-intentioned comments that we make to kids, but we don't always, we don't always know uh, how they're interpreting it. And there was a, uh, an occasion, I had a pretty traumatic experience at school in the fourth grade. And I look back now at that and know that I did not know how to handle that situation. And I wish I had known and I wish I had had a more open discussion um, with, with adults. All right, Cindy, you can't leave this open now. Okay. This is this is just adults we're talking to here, right? So yeah. Um kids, my under, kids a, under kids under the age of 40, close your ears. Okay. All right, great. Um, my teacher died during class in the fourth grade and she had a heart attack. And so, yeah, and I don't, it was not handled. You know, we didn't have counselors at that time in the schools. We didn't have grief specialists and we were sent out to recess for the rest of the day. We came in uh, right before the day was ended and the uh, principal said a prayer and that was the end. They didn't call our parents. We didn't, nobody knew what had happened. And I clammed up when I got home. I didn't mention it to my parents. We didn't always have a real, when we, when I was a kid, you didn't really talk things through like we do today. Right. And so I didn't know how to express what I was feeling. And, you know, kids go through crazy things like putting guilt on themselves. I had said she looks like my grandmother who was dead. I thought, you know, there's all kids have crazy, crazy ideas. And I really want to help adults now open up discussions with kids more easily. I want kids to feel freer to talk about what they're feeling and what's going on. That's but but so very often this still happens because the kids don't know that they should be talking. That's and, right. And, and they, they still clam up the way that you did. Wow, Cindy, wow. I'm, I'm getting all shivery because uh, this happened to me in grade seven that we discovered two dead children in, in the swimming pool of the school. And wow, oh. this is something that like surfaces once every 10 years. Yeah. And yeah. You, you, you surfaced it now. Yeah. So... Uh, the kids that in, in my class, I suppose this is something that we we live with somewhere in our minds, but it surfaces yeah. so very rarely. Yeah. Um, so thank you for sharing <laughs> this, even though it's a uh, it's yeah. traumatic. Um, and then and then uh, to quote to Tom Sawyer, you grew up, and uh, or you growed up, I don't remember. And then and then uh, what happened? 
Um, I was a teacher for a bit. Um, I had kids and stayed home for a bit also. And then I did a few different things. I've kind of been someone who likes new things and tries a lot of different things and doesn't stick with things forever or probably as long as I should sometimes, but I worked with the Children's Museum for a while and um, in the development stages and absolutely love that. And yeah, that sounds remarkable. What kind of museum was it? Just a children's museum, all kinds of water play and, you know, climbing things and, and science things. And that's where I've been having my launch parties is at children's museums. And so wow. it's, it's been, yeah, it's been fun. So, and then um, I- One second, what did you study? You didn't tell us what you studied. Uh, my bachelor's degree was in child psychology. And then um, after my kids uh, grew and were in school, I went back and got my teaching certificate. And so those, those two things together, I think have a lot to do with my picture book writing because those moments with kids and books, my own kids as well as kids in the classroom are the most special to me. So um, you, I don't know whether you remember any of the children's books you grew up on, the picture books. Like I said, other than the, the little golden books, the plain ones, the one that I remember so, the some most. Of them, some of them were amazing. Yes. The one that I remember the most is Ferdinand. And I think I, think I really felt for his feeling on the outside. And it's really strange because a lot of the books that I write are about kids who feel left out. But I don't think I really was left out as a kid. So I'm not really sure where that comes from. Maybe comes from the fact that maybe I didn't always treat those other kids the way I wish I had. I'm not sure. I'm Listening to you and how you dig into that psyche and why people write what they write has made me stop and think about that. And I'm not, I'm not really sure what the answer is. Oh, we're never sure. But it's, mm -hmm. I think... I think it's worth thinking about it for sure i love that i love it, the psychology it, of things it, it can only make us better writers i think absolutely um so and and so the kids grew up and then one day you woke up in the morning and said oh i'm going to write picture books writing was something that i always enjoyed doing but I didn't have the confidence that I needed in it until I was quite a bit older. And it was at the point where my old, youngest daughter, I knew she was going to be leaving, at graduating, and I knew I was going to have a really tough time with that. So I decided to be a little proactive and I started writing just before she um, left home so that I had something to dig into. And you know, it's funny, but there is nothing else I've ever done aside from being a parent that I felt so ingrained in. I, I can sit down and write and the whole world disappears. And so I, it's, it's just, I, I waited too long, but it's, it's really been what I needed. Okay, but I, I, I don't believe that you can wait too long. That's true. That's true. That's what I'm trying to teach other folks my age is that it's never too late to dream, right? Never too late. I think quite the contrary. At any age, it's wonderful to dream. Yes. Uh, this is what keeps us young. Um, so uh, before we talk about your writing journey, you didn't mention your folks. My folks are absolutely wonderful. I couldn't have been luckier. Um, it was a very traditional home. My dad worked far more than I wish he'd had to. Um, and my mom was home with us. And we had just a, you know, wonderful family was best. My parents' best friends were brothers and sisters. My best friends were cousins. It was a very, a very close family close-knit family um, and my folks are still running circles around me and uh, doing great unbelievable that's wonderful yeah yeah wish them well 80s. thank you incredible um so now so was there a moment 
when you said this could be me? It was, oh, not to write the book, but me. I think no, it to was, become a, to become a writer. Yeah. Okay. It really, I have to give credit to the Kidlet community, the uh, the twelve by twelves, and the uh, Kidlet four one one, and that reaching out and having other people that are doing the same thing that I am, as well as people who have finally reached that that goal of having a picture book published, and supporting each other it's it really is an amazing amazing group of people who i i can't be more thankful Susanna leonard hills contests every year you know little things like that and you get in and you get a little oh i got an honorable mention oh got a little better got a little better it really does keep you keep you going and critique partners just like i said i i 100% know that I would not have stuck with it and accomplished this goal if it weren't for that group of people. Okay, but the learning process. That's part of it because, too. Because, the Cindy, because, because there's so many writers, uh, myself included, um, that didn't realize, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself now, that we were pretty lousy and we needed to study and learn and improve. Absolutely. So was, was there a moment when you said, oh, wow, I want to be a writer, but I, I realize that I have to belong to a community, I have to be critiqued, I have to submit stuff, I have to get rejected, I have to fail and fail and fail, and maybe I'll never succeed. I think the time when I finally said, okay, I can do this is when I number one, uh, did well in one of those contests and felt like, okay, you know, I can keep going. And number two, went to a conference that was run by um, a literary agency and an agent said, keep, you know, don't forget me, keep sending me stuff. And those, those two things. And I, I hate to say that because that's external, you know, validation, right? Instead of the, you know, instead of feeling I can do this, but sometimes that's what you need, I think. I think you always need it. Yeah, yeah, yep. So, but I think those are the, those are the two main things that, that helped me keep going. Okay, so just to reiterate, uh, realize that you need to belong to a community Realize yes. that you need to learn and improve. Realize that yes. you need to get rejected. Um, realize that you have to enter contests. Yep. Um, and uh, and then what happened? Well, and and part of that getting part of that entering contests, learning to put yourself out there. Right. I the first two or three years, I didn't let anybody, even my family, look see what I was doing. I it was you know, I was not ready to, to put myself out there. And that's, that's a really hard step. That's a really tough one. Because uh, as we Jews would say, uh, you put your kishkas on the table. Uh, that's right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, th I think that, you know, I, I, what you're saying resonates so well, because, um, those of us who are not young and have done so many things in our careers, um, and some of them very successful, uh, but there's little as daunting as sending out a manuscript. Yeah, it's terrifying. I The first time that I got a critique back from a professional, I was crushed, right? Because I thought it was perfect. And it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do. It's, and here's a here's a story I probably shouldn't even tell because it's embarrassing. But uh, no, you must. I, you must. <laughs> when I first started with uh, either twelve by twelve or just on four one one, I'm not sure which. But and made a comment. Someone asked about goals. You know, they ask a question. What are your goals for this year? And it was at the beginning of the year. And I said something really silly, like I'm going to have an agent in you know six months, and I'm going to have a book. And and I was so I was so oblivious to the reality of it and and how hard it was and would be. So yeah. It's, so, it's crazy, it's, so, but you have to go through that. Let's give a shout out to Elaine and Sylvia from Kidlit 411. For sure. Who have assembled a miraculous 
14,000 uh, writers and illustrators. Uh, and once in a while, you will see a, um, a newbie come on and say, uh, I'm new, I'm writing my yep. first. Uh, what happens when every agent wants to, uh, to uh, represent me? How do I pick one? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, um, it's, it's funny. So uh, but, uh, it, it's funny to look at ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So uh, are, are, you age, are you agented now? I am, I am. I'm represented by Hannah Mann from um, Writer's House. And we're working on getting some more stuff out there right now. That's wonderful. So is this the uh, agent that you found at the conference? No, actually, that didn't um, that didn't uh, come to fruition. But um, I still was contacting her now and then and sending a few things out to her. But um, nope, Hannah, I've been with Hannah for just over a year. So and how did you find each other? I had sent her a few things throughout the years um, in the slush pile and gotten some really nice personal notes back from her, which doesn't always happen. And I had recently sent, you know, you hear you're not supposed to be sending to publishing houses and agents at the same time, right? Because then if an agent likes a manuscript and you've already shopped it out there, then what are they going to do with it, right? So I finally, I had had an agent a couple of years ago and that didn't work out. So I decided that I was going to have two banks of manuscripts, one that I would send to smaller houses and then some that I would send to agents so that there wasn't that conflict there. So I had sent Hannah something and uh, then this could be you, um, got interest from Cardinal Rural Press. So then I talked with Hannah and um, said that you have a different manuscript of mine. And she said, oh, yes, I was going to call you. So anyway, that's how it happened. So It's wonderful. But I mean, you, you've skipped the part because um, I talk about this a lot. Um, getting an agent is one in a thousand. That's and get, getting an agent from the slush pile is one in a million. It's so hard. It, and, and, you know, I understand how busy they are and how many manuscripts they get. No, but and I mean, do I, you, do you, Cindy, do you realize that you are a, the one, you know, the one uh, seed out of 10,000 that found fertile soil? I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful for that. Thank I, you. I, 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 in retrospect, I can see why, because your book um, I, I, I want to say it breaks all the rules, the cardinal rules. Uh, and it, it does in a sense, but it does so in such a wonderful way. Um, and Thank and it, it's, I looked at it and I said, wow. And, and page after page and it grows and it grows. And, and the, um, the rhyming scheme is, is, is so com complex and it works so well. And this could be you and this could be you and you could be this. And, and and I said, you know, oy vey, you can have a book which teaches something really important, and but it's so much fun that you forget that it's, it's teaching you. So I'm going to have to now rethink everything that I've been teaching other people. <laughs> based, well, based thank on, you. Based on your book. And, and the other thing is, you know, um, and I'm sure you've thought of this, that this could be you. Uh, is also your growth as, as an author. For sure. Yeah. And and I'm starting to do some, just some little social media posts right now that take um, phrases from the book or stanzas from the book and equate them to, to writing experiences and how, you know, the rejection, for instance, the little author on one page that has... Um, little crumpled up pieces of paper because she had to sketch and then refine it says and she has little little you know that's a writer right that's yeah. that's that's we can it's, equate can, many what's, what's that? can you can you read those two pages please sure um this this is the little astronaut says who displays explore drive and astronauts let's soar drive the faster higher more drive blast off it could be you and this is a page that i really like to talk with kids about a lot who has keen design flair 
an artist's time to shine flare, a sketch and then refine flare, create, it could be you. Cindy, do you remember the moment that you had the idea for this book? You know, I don't, um, ex an exact moment. Although I know that um, it's a growth mindset is something I had been trying to talk with my grandsons about and to make sure, for instance, like I said earlier, that I can't do it yet, but I'm still working on it. Or, you know, when they think they have failed, that they can learn from that failure. And so it was the most intentional book I've ever written because I, you know, I really did have a, a purpose for it and, and wanted to. And like I said before, the, the other thing that was really important to me is the back matter. And I'll just show you really quickly, um, giving exact, exact ways to rephrase our comments to the kids and help them to help them to to you know think about things differently and have that growth mindset so it, it wasn't an exact moment but it kind of built on on that desire to to help my grandsons see things a little differently do you want to guess what i like most about your book i don't know it's the modal you don't say this can be you you say this could be you. So of all the wonderful right. stuff in your book, um, the, 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 the hilarious rhyme, you know, the shift to the rhyme, the hip ba ba bam boom bam bam it could be you. The doodle doodle bam boom the keep doodle bam boom the tittle doodle bam boom bam bang This could be you. This could be you. Not this can be you. And I love that. I, I, that's a great, that's a great, I need to think more on that too and how to capitalize on that even a little more. I love that. Well, you wrote it, not me. Um, but I love that you pointed that out because I hadn't really, I hadn't really thought about it that way. Well, you know, sometimes when we write, we, we're, we're not thinking too much about it and then it turns mm -hmm. out really interesting. Yeah. There, originally, when my first draft, it was why not you instead of this could be you. And it's so, I'm so glad that I changed that because a book came out just uh, about three weeks ago by an uh, NFL player or someone. And the title was why not you. So I was like, oh. <laughs> it, it's a very common theme. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, all of these biographies. Um, yeah of people who succeeded. But let's talk, you're, you're a psychologist, let's talk about, you know, we're talking about the people who could be you and, and did be you. And, um, and Julie Headland, whom we should also mention for the 12 by 12, um, taught me something on this show that I don't know whether it helps the people who aren't there yet. Um, but she says, you are. In other words, yes. um, you know, we always think we're here and, and we, and we want to be there. Mm -hmm. And what Julie taught me during the interview is that, no, 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 you, you, you're there. There's another yeah. there. But you're yeah. always there. And, and how do you, how do you um, look at that? I love that because, and, and you are a writer. You might not be a published author yet, but you are a writer. And that's something that this community has, has helped me to learn too. And I don't remember who said it, but it was like, I'm learning to play the guitar. But how are you learning to play the guitar? You're playing the guitar. So you are, you are playing. You might not be playing perfectly. You might not be, and that's another part of the book. You might not be the perfect guitar player yet, but you're still building that and you're still doing it and you can enjoy the journey as you're going. So yeah, I love that. So listen, this has been a real um, experience for me. Um, having a look at your book, uh, falling in love with it, even though ostensibly you know it's it's a teaching book it's a 
it's a rhyming book, oy vey. Uh, but you turned me around completely. Uh, it's a wonderful book. It's fun. It's funny. Um, and um, I think that everybody should buy one. Um, and yes, while you're reading it to your children and grandchildren, um, you should be reading it to yourself too. Right. Because I don't know about you, uh, I'm 70 years old. Um, I love these interviews. I love writing. Um, and I'm not there yet, but I am there. And uh, we all are. That's right. So, and, and, and what you're teaching essentially is uh, what we talked about, which is be the best you. Whatever, Absolutely. Whatever you is. So, um, Cindy, this is um, your debut book. It's it wonderful. Um, and I'm going to wish you that you'll have many more. And that, Thank they, you. and that they will be even better, even though um, it's hard to imagine, but I know that you're going to surprise <laughs> me. Thank you so very much. I love this. So uh, me too. So um, take care and uh, remember to help other writers. I'm sure you are. Absolutely. Uh, who are on this journey of this could be you. And uh, this is you now. Wonderful. Yeah. So congratulations on your 10 day old book. Have a wonderful Easter. And uh, to all our listeners and watchers, uh, whatever holidays you're celebrating this week, uh, Easter, Passover, uh, Ramadan, um, remember that we are all people and we have to love one another. Yes, absolutely. So Cindy Williams Schauben, this is Mel Rosenberg for the Children's Literature Channel of the New Books Network. Thank you so much for being on the show and good luck. Thank you. Bye. I Bye. loved it. Me too. <laughs>